Uh, first session of today is uh, basically a focused uh, demo. And first uh, talk of, uh, first demo of this uh, session is like CASSIS and Aladdin interfaced for a VO compliant spectral data cube analysis tool. So I, now I would uh, invite speakers to introduce them and uh, proceed for the session. Thank you. Uh, yes, I, I am uh, I am Francois Bonarel, and I am uh, working at CDS. And I will, uh, uh, with the help of Audrey from Toulouse, uh, show you uh, a nice combination between Cassis and Aladdin. Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, not yet. Is it okay? Yeah. So. Uh, this is this will be a recorded demo, but uh, it's actually working. So if you go to the Aladdin page and pick up uh, the Aladdin beta uh, version, you could should be able to reproduce what we will uh, show you. So. This is a collaborative work by uh, all this uh, bunch of people from Toulouse and Strasbourg. Uh, so let's first speak about the general astronomy context. Uh, as you know, we have now facing uh, the production of uh, more and more spectral cubes. Uh, in radio astronomy, for example, these uh, spectral cubes are already huge. Uh, surveys like ALMA, JIVE, VLA, LOFA, ASCAP, and so on are there and produce a great bunch of data. In the future, we will have SKA. Of course, I forgot Mercat. Sorry about that. So uh, we also have MUSE and others in the optical range, optical domain, and uh, even in uh, the X-ray, XMM channel, are producing tubes. Uh, the interesting thing is that uh, archive data are available for reuse, sometimes on proprietary services, and sometimes also more and more with VO services. But uh, we currently miss a VO tool to visualize and analyze these cubes. Uh, be cautious that I know that there exist tools. We have seen a, a beautiful one yesterday but it's not directly embedded as a VO portal. So that's my point. How to solve that issue? So Cassis and Aladdin are widely used uh, VO tools at the moment on their niche. So the niche for Cassis is Spectra and images in cubes for Aladdin. So our basic idea is not to create a new tool for spectral cubes, but to make Cassis and Aladdin collaborate by exchanging data and instruction in such a way that if you have a cube loaded in Aladdin, you select something, a region there, and you get the spectra and Cassis at that point. And if you select some range here, you will see the spectral plane uh, in Aladdin. So Cassis, a little bit more about it. It has been developed in Toulouse by IRAP. It's a Java tool providing following functionalities. So first you can discover spectra and access them from the SSA services or the APN tap services. Uh, you can of course display the spectrum. Uh, um, CASIS also allows line identification using uh, either SQLite uh, databases local or uh, remote services just as VMDC services or SLAP services from the VO. So uh, you can compare your spectrum with various models, uh, fit uh, them and so on and so forth. And last but not least, determine physical parameter of the sources. Aladdin has been developed by CDS in Strasbourg. It's a Java VO portal with the following functionalities. So you can discover images and cubes uh, either from data access layer services or from IPS and with the help of uh, the so-called MORP space-time coverage. All these are VO standards. 
You can overlay catalogs and database records on top of images at the right position. There are a lot of visualization features. Astrometric and photometric calibration are available. And the cubes uh, can be displayed in movie mode. Uh, and you can also have some spectrum extraction from the cube. So the idea of Aladdin interface with CASIS is that CASIS uh, is installed as a so-called plugin of Aladdin. It uh, provides better integration than SAMP in such a way that you can share the same Java virtual machine and the memory buffers, and you can communicate instructions. So it works with fit spectral cubes of whatever origin. So you can have your local cubes or preloaded cubes and work with them, but you can also access cubes via the so-called dial services. And sometimes the IPS cubes, which are not uh, usable directly, they have the functionality to show their progenitors, which are IPS uh, cubes. So in that case, you can also load them and use the tool. So first, Aladdin can select positions or regions in the cube and extract compute spectra and then send them to CASIS. The spectra can be deleted on whatever side with the deletion reflected on the other side. Uh, you can also select channel ranges on uh, the spectrum in CASIS and display store that on cube display by Aladdin. So now the demo, which is a recorded demo, will start uh, with a local green bank telescope cube. And after that, I will show you a new cube retrieved from ESO tap service. So the first part of the demo, uh, Audrey from Toulouse will, be, will speak. Uh, 
that is also the possibility of Malata to uh, select a circular area. So you can do it several times. And to do it exactly the same way. So, for example, in Malata and in Cassis. You can also uh, select your selection and move it and you see that the spectrum evolves simultaneously. I'm going to show the position where the lines are bright, for example here. So you can see four lines. So if you want, you can uh, plot the moment zero map of a transition. So for that, you use the middle mouse button to bend it in cases and you have this map of the antibiotic spills on this line. So if you want to delete uh, this map, you know, click on this plane uh, and you delete it. So you have uh, your two tracks, so you can just go on it again. Sorry. And uh, center. If you want to remove this selection in cases, you just need to double click. And you can see that if you click on the spectrum, you have the corresponding uh, image in the tube uh, in Alabama. For example, here it's very easy. If I click here, the signal is uh, much brighter. So now we are going to identify this line. So in Cassis, we go to species. So you have access. Uh, here with a small database. So if you want, you can uh, select a larger database. But for the example, it will be enough. So you select all the molecules and you display. So this is proposed you four transitions. So there is uh, four lines. There are four lines of CH three CH, and as you can see, it corresponds to these lines here. Uh, but there is a shift. So in fact, it's due to the, the velocity of the cube because there is uh, no value of velocity in this cube. So we want to determine the velocity of this source. So to do that, we can add, add a velocity axis. So you have to give uh, recurrent frequency. So for that, you can read it here. So you can click on this transition. You Click again on velocity and you put the same value. And click enter. And now you have a velocity axis. So this transition here corresponds to this line. So you can zoom in and see that the velocity is about minus 6.1 km per second. So it's like this plane, now a transition at here uh, to the right velocity. You can do it for all the lines, and, uh, and you can see that uh, we clearly detected four lines of the resistance. So now I'm going to show you how to uh, do a rotational diagram in case the contact you need to fit uh, the lines. So there are different ways to do that in case. So for uh, this demo, I'm going to show you how to use the advanced fit. So this window opens and then you right click on the transition and you do fit C3 CCH. So you can see four tables with some uh, pre enter uh, parameters and you can just select fit current and you have a nice fit for the four lines. Uh, so you want to save the, this parameter, so you select the file. Uh, so it tells me that I didn't select the telescope, so I want to add one, so I select the DVD. And I create a new file, so I'm going to call it uh, CH3CCH demo. So I have already a file name like that, so I want to replace it. And I don't forget to save it. Then I go to rotational diagram, I load the file. It asks me 
the calibration error. So I, we are going to assume that it's 20%. I didn't compute the RMS, but it's something that you can do in cases if you want. And I convert to TSR and TMD for this period. And then I display the rotational diagram, so you can see that the rotational diagram is quite nice here. So with the middle mouse button, I select the four points. I close the selection and I display the fit. It gives me an excitation temperature of 36 km and the ground density of 1.5 times 40 per centimeter. So I'm going to stop here for the demo using a local file. And now Francois is going to show you the demo with the new to retrieve from the ISO tab service. Uh, yes, uh, so suppose I am an astronomer interested in young stellar object in the area of uh, Orion Nebula, for example. So I give the name of uh, a star there and uh, display the DSS image of uh, this area. Uh, and now I am looking for ESO services in this area. And I found uh, in green uh, a tap service. So I select the interface to the stack tap service. I am now defining the area where I will be looking for uh, data. And I add uh, another criterion, which is uh, that I want cubes. So this is uh, the opscore data product type parameter, which I select to be cube. And then I would like to have only Muse data and not, for example, Alma. So I select the OPS collection. So ISO uh, tab service uh, is sending me back uh, the list of uh, available data in this area. I go back again to uh, my initial target enlarge this and I see that there is only one data set available. You have seen the field of view. I just check by looking at the OPS release date parameter that these data are public. So that's the case, 2021 January. So I go back to the data link menu. I discover that there is probably a um, preview in HTML. So I see there is a nice star in the middle. So we back to the data link. Uh, the requested file, I know it's too uh, large. So I select only the cutout facility, which we call the soda in the, in the soda service from ISO. I selected these cubes are eight arc seconds by eight arc seconds. I only took basically something like two arc seconds by two arc seconds in the middle. And I also selected a, a smaller spectral range than the full one. So I reduced by 100 nanometers on the blue side and 200 nanometers on the red side. So now it takes a little time, but this tube is coming. So now it is. So this uh, cube can be displayed in movie mode. I can select some of the uh, some of the spectral planes or let that move alone. I can also change the contrast, maybe. So this is typical uh, Aladdin behavior. And. Uh, then I can uh, launch uh, CASIS, uh, as you have seen with Audrey part of the demo previously. So I launch CASIS. So bring back the control panel there. And I just uh, select uh, the region around the, the, cent the central star. And this is the spectrum 
with uh, three lines. So I directly see spectral lines and I am selecting now uh, the lines as you have seen with Audrey previously. And these are N2 lines and the so-called H alpha line and again the other N2 lines in the area. So basically uh, that's it. When you have done this, you can, uh, of course, with these tubes that you retrieve from the VO, you are able to uh, you are able to 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 do exactly the same what uh, uh, Audrey has shown uh, with a local tube. So you can play with, with that; it's online. Uh, now, if you have questions, uh, there are uh, the main developers and the astronomers which which have been. Uh, uh, collaborating in developing these tools are also online, so some of them can answer you. Okay. okay. Hello. Uh, so thanks a lot uh, for this uh, nice journey, though the sound was in, in the recorded video is not very clear. But uh, now we have uh, time for questions. Uh, if we have, I mean, I cannot see any on Discord channel. O okay, there is one question from the room, please. Hi, Francois, this is Igor. Uh, Hello, Igor. So, um, uh, you know, we, uh, I attended all, these, uh, all the talks yesterday and including the one from our group on the 3D visualization. And uh, the main question, the main problem that we see here is that uh, there are kind of two limiting cases. One case is when you download the entire thing on your computer and try to render it in the browser, which becomes awfully slow because the browsers are not meant to render the stuff. The other way is to produce the, um, uh, basically the visualization remotely uh, and transfer only the images. And here I can see that you do the cutout of the data cube. So where is it done? Uh, that's my first question, on which end? And second, how do you deal with large data cubes? Because again, I can see here the limitation. Maybe it's not as severe as uh, with browsers because Aladdin and uh, both Aladdin and Cassis know how to deal with large data sets. But still, downloading, if you want to play with the entire uh, cube, even Muse is like eight gigabytes, and so it's pretty hard. Uh, yes, uh, you are. You are right. So, uh, in the case of the cutout, uh, I may not have been clear enough, but uh, the cutout is a Soda service. So, Soda is the the protocol, the so VO protocol the, on the to ESO define. Side. So, it's on the ESO uh, side, right? So, yes, if this is provided by ESO, and we are in Aladdin, we are just interfacing to this service. Okay. So. So the cutout is made by ESO, so we don't transfer the whole tube. The reason I use soda is just is exactly what you said, because uh, doing, doing lively the, the retrieval of the three gigabytes of the full news cube will, will have been very uh, slow. So if you want to, to work with the whole cube, you have to download probably previously and then play with it locally. But, but, but this, this means that cutout, in order to play with it this way that, you, that you've shown, one needs to implement the SODA service on the server side to be able to do the cutouts. Is that right? So this is, this is intended that uh, the, the archives implement uh, not only the full retrieval, but also the cutout. Yes, you are right. Mm -hmm. So we currently have a couple of uh, archives in, in the in astronomy, which, which already have uh, the soda cutout facility. So there is uh, ESO, but you can also find this at CADC, at GAVO, mm -hmm. and uh, at uh, ASCAP, CASDA, things like that. Okay. So it exists already. Yeah. Uh, and how about HIPS? You mentioned HIPS cubes, but you haven't shown anything. So HIPS cubes currently uh, we, we cannot uh, have the collaboration between CASIS and 
and uh, Aladdin with Ips cubes uh, due to the fact that Ips is uh, loading uh, extra uh, information, so it will have been uh, very slow. Okay. So we, the only way we can use Ips is when Ips show the, their progenitors. So that is the fit file from which they have been uh, produced as a link behind the Ips. So oh, right. if you have this, you can load them exactly like from a DAL service, data access layer service, Obstap or whatever, and uh, it works. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye, Igor. So, uh, do we have any other question from the room? Okay, uh, we don't have any question. So we, now we can save to uh, next talk.